Alrighty, howdy howdy lads! Welcome back to another Minecraft Let's Play. So I finally uh, edited the signs a little bit, edited in, hilarious. I have difficulties ranging from minor, intermediate, and advanced. And uh, these are all kind of based on like like how much effort will be put into uh, into making the farm just by my best judgment. Some of these may or may not be out of place, but uh, they, we are going to be doing a few things. This is going to be a, a cave working episode for sure. I've been doing a lot of mining, expanding it out. So here's what we're going to focus on. A honey farm, uh, a wool farm, and a uh, the auto sorter. I kind of have to extend it out a little bit. I think last but not least, the cactus farm. Although now thinking about the cactus farm, it's actually one of the most simplest farms you could possibly make. You know what? I put it there anyway. My name is DJ, and I will be your captain for this evening. Arrgh! Oh, that's actually missing a hopper. I have no idea what that's supposed to be. Okay. So this area, I'm probably going to make it disappear at some point. And then over here, this is where I'll keep all, like, the nethers and the end world, like, shit or whatever. That's going down this hall. Over over there, that's going to be the main building blocks. Over here, uh, pretty much exactly what it's like right now. Miscellaneous, uh, crap like this, kind of just extra storage for that eye. Okay, so it's been about, like, maybe a little over two hours. This was a lot of work, actually, dude. If you ever switch out, like, your auto sorter, or you change it up in the most minor way possible, be careful, because it is, uh, it's a lot of work. On top of that, when you switch everything o over, because I got, like, this, uh, item elevator here. Uh, I got, like, three stack chests full of just blocks. It it's probably gonna be like that for for a while yeah dude this is this it's gonna take a lot a, a little bit it's gonna be constant clicking for the next two hours maybe uh just working on this is a minorly exhausting here i'll be honest but you know what it's worth it i'm back i'm not i'm not gonna say that i'm done per se but i'm i'm pretty close on being done i have like this hallway behind me here that i have to get done uh but other than that i Done a lot of work. Several hours split across like a couple days and woof. But everything is trimmed down a little bit. Quick little walk through. So it does look a lot more uh, cozier and a lot more spacious. Uh, Cause I think the design I had before, uh, it kind of just stopped like right here and it felt very uh, claustrophobic. It's It's been hours, it's been hours. It'll be a strange feeling for when that stops clicking and I'm right here, right? But uh. So what I'm trying to say here is, I've been here for a while, and I need a break. So, the best break to uh, to take is one that involves sheep, wool collecting, somewhere to get the hell away from the auto sorting clicking. It's an auto sorted man, it's gonna do that. Alright, this is the hallway that we will utilize for holding our sheep in. I'd say the only difficult part about this, somehow reel the friendly neighborhood sheep in, in this hallway right here. Uh, it's going to be kind of tricky because I don't know how the hell they're supposed to get up here to begin with. But uh, I'll figure that out later. Okay, so I started to explore uh, for sheep first thing because I didn't want to wait until later because I feel like if I wait until later... Come over here, Mike. I feel like I'd probably be doing this for a good boner and a half, so... And one thing I seem to notice is when you use the lead now, for some reason it kind of pins on top of your head when you're kind of leading the whole caravan. Never mind, getting the sheep up here uh, actually isn't the most uh, bad thing in the world. Uh, I, I said it was going to be like the hardest thing ever, but no, because I totally forgot I made another way to get up here. Yeah, go figure. Uh, I got three, so that's like 13 more to go. Uh, I'm hoping they don't despawn, but they probably will by the time I'm about ready to set up the whole thing. So I'm, I'm probably going to need to get some name tags here real quick. Alright, so this design is actually very simplistic. I don't know how any anyone could fuck it up. So, uh, you have a grass block, observer facing into this block, trigger this redstone dust, which will then activate this dispenser, which at some point will have a shears in here, and then all she wrote after that. Okay, so I just want to give a quick update here. Uh, I'd say it's been about... 
half hour. Uh, we're trying to set this all up. We're pretty much almost done here. Uh, this is kind of the system I got going on here. The hopper uh, minecart, you know, goes around uh, fully. Very satisfying to look at. Over here at the this hopper is where it kind of collects all the wool and then gets sorted out accordingly. Now, I still need to somehow manage to get the uh, all different color wool uh, over here, though. Uh, but other than that, I'd say the last part is to set up the sheep. I've already got three ready. Here's who I have so far. Now, I don't know if you need name tags uh, to this day to make prevent sheep from despawning, but some of these sheep I've had for a little bit, uh, kind of like the plain old ones right there, but they haven't despawned yet. But as a precaution, I'm naming them just in case because it's kind of annoying when they despawn, you kind of need them, right? So we have Ruby, Bobby, uh, D's Biscuits, Clayton, Golden Graham, and Blueberry for now, right? Now the tricky part comes with trying to lure them in their selective of cells, which I also decorated. Here's what we need to do though. Okay, Ruby's already kind of escaping me here. Okay, we'll do one at a time. I, I think the best thing we can do is one at a time here because if I try to do a whole herd, it's going to be a pain in my ass a little bit. So this can't be too difficult. At least I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna try it. This might be kind of comedic here. Yeah, see, this is already uh, close, close, close. Can you do it to that? Now here's the thing here. Can you do it to that one? It's like you let them off the lead. Uh, they have like a few seconds. Yeah, there we go. So that won't be too bad. The only downside is you won't be able to see their name tag, but uh, they're there. I need you to work with me here, though, my guy. Please, come on. Who's a good boy? Dude, I hate you, man. I think I'll uh, I think I'll be right back with this one, dude. <laughs> all right, so all the sheep are in their selective of test tubes over there. At least the the ones that have, are tagged and colored and everything. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do real quick before I go on the honey farm, the pumpkins and melons kind of just like they're kind of just chilling here, right? So I don't know if it's it's that they're just chilling there or what, but I'm gonna actually try to fix this because if I don't do it right now, I'm probably not gonna get to it. The system I used for this uh, tracking system here is I actually use detector drills, which is probably not the best idea because uh, what I seem to notice with the detecting. Oh, where the hopper mine card? Oh, it's up there. I forgot. It has like a loading chunks issue where you go, like you leave a chunk, but you come back and all of a sudden the mine card will stop working. Or if I load back up and uh, load back up the world again, it's really annoying. And that only does it with this because it's like, because uh, this, every time I load uh, up this world and I go to the sugar cane and kill, uh, bamboo farm, uh, the rail cart system uses the redstone. Uh, blocks, which is always powered so the mine cart never stops moving, but detector rails, man, I don't know what it is with those, but it just, it, it likes to stop working for some reason, so. I'm just gonna fix this up real quick. Uh, not too big of a deal. Okay, I've also noticed that uh, this torch actually burnt out somehow. I don't know how that happened. It's indicating there's something in here, though. What? Oh, that's why. Oh, good job, Captain. Okay, so everything's all fixed up here. I'm hoping that should uh, get the results I need here. Here's what we're going to do. We have our building materials, and bees can actually interact with flowering azalea leaves. Uh, we got our shears ready, uh, our glass, because you're kind of a fool if you build any form of farm without having glass, because that's what makes the whole thing come to life a little bit, right? It's very glorifying to look at, too, man. Yeah, let's mine this out real quick. And this is where we're going to put the jungle logs. And we want this light too high as well. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to dig a two wide, uh, two by ten gap right here. And this is where we're going to place our azalea leaves. And then uh, directly underneath that, we're going to do the hopper and minecart. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. Making sure I'm getting this right here. It's not a difficult build. I'm just making sure I get everything correct oriented here. Next thing we're going to do, observers, uh, red eye, uh, red eye, yeah, I guess red eye, facing upwards. This is kind of annoying. All right, now for the redstone dust. Place redstone on top of the, uh, the red eyes here on every single one of them. Make sure you do not skip one or that select a beehive that is facing under it will not retrieve any honey from it. And then what will happen is because uh, the red eye is facing upwards, it will trigger the redstone up here, which will then activate this observer facing down in the dispenser, which will have a shear in it. All right. 
the hole has been dug out into an area of uh, worth pleasing here, where we see these uh, three empty spaces, redstone blocks. Uh, if you can't already tell, these are where the powered rails will be going. Make a ring around a rosy at the end right here. Alright, go ahead and place a comparator right here, followed up by a block of choosing, redstone torch, place a block right there, and then a redstone dust. Which will soft power this block, which will ultimately uh, power this rail as long as there are no items in this hopper. Otherwise, the comparator will sense that and turn off the, uh, the rail. Okay, and then the last two spots, go ahead and place powered rails right there. A couple will suffice. And uh, that is the collection system. Beautiful. Uh, but what I seem to notice is when dispensers shear stuff, it makes the durability go down hell of a lot slower. Which is a good thing, but it doesn't make sense on why if you use it, it makes it go down hell of a lot faster. Like by the time you shear three blocks off, it's like a third way done. Like, I don't get that. Uh, this is, uh, this is working pretty good. Uh, I didn't think of how many bees would be in the nests here, but, uh, I, I guess that means more, uh, I don't know, that was a big cluster of bees that came out, though. Let's see how much honeycomb came from that. Uh, I did already collect, like, seven of them. So, uh, some of them fell. How did that happen? Twelve? Twenty-four? Yeah, may I, I think maybe I might just keep it at nine, or I'll kind of just expand it, but essentially this is pretty much all the farm. Well, yeah, look how many bees are in there. Lag's not gonna be an issue, right? It doesn't feel laggy. All right, that being said, let's uh, move on to the cactus farm, I guess. All right, so if you live in a cave under the sea like me, you're probably gonna wanna dig a hole. <laughs> okay, we've got the hole dig up here. Yeah, we'll just fill in this whole side up. We'll fill in probably like uh, the three sides right here with uh, with deep slate. Every single farm I have in this uh, on that level uh, will kind of come down here and we can collect the collect it via storage or something like that. I, I think that's what I'm going to do. This this level will be like the new level for the storage systems for the auto farms that I have up here. Uh, going one block inward diagonally, we're going to place uh, one block right here. I'm going to use this as a reference to indicate where all the cactuses will be kind of standing here. We'll have one on this uh, the bottom right here, one up top as well. Uh, as I dig, did dig, uh, dig this hole for a reason. A little tongue twister for me right there. That's on every single one of these little pedestal posts here. And then, sand. Okay, so that's the first level done. Now, before I uh, start putting the cactuses on this level, I'm going to do the second level and then put in all the safety rails the where the cactus will eventually break off if it touches it, right? Yeah, it was a lot easier to do, well, sort of. Uh, a lot easier to do this in a creative, I will say that. Okay, yeah, so I just say for this part, you kind of just... Place two blocks directly, directly above the sand, and then your fence. Found a cool hack right here. If you know where the sand's gonna land, just do this. It is kind of a uh, difficult to directly place the cross there on the top side of the fence here. All right, now go ahead and grab your block of choice right here, and kind of just uh, build a line of uh, blocks on the sides here. Uh, go in between each sand and break. You can't figure it out by now. This is where the fence posts are going to go, which when the cactus grows, it will break off because fence post. I'm not going to lie, this bee farm is actually working pretty efficiently well. I will give it that. Beautiful. All 40 pieces of cacti and they're selective of slots here, right? All right. All the walls are filled in. Cactus is good to go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to the redstone components. Go ahead and mine this hole right here. The hoppers are going to go. Go ahead and mine out those two blocks as well. Okay, come on the outside right here. This is where the first dropper is going to go. Oh, the hell. Okay, yep. All right, so come around where the droppers are at. Uh, go ahead and place one comparator facing outwards, followed up by a repeater behind it. Uh, into a block. We're then going to place redstone dust on the side of the block. Oops, two redstone repeaters. Now place a block in front of this repeater, excuse me, and then we'll place one dust right here. But yeah, essentially this is where you want to put a uh, place a chest. Let's go ahead and mine out this area real quick. <laughs> wow, shit, look at that. I'm happy, I'm happy. Ooh. Hey, look, ooh, here we go. Okay, that was two this time. Let's see if that works. Yes, it does! Sweet! Okay, it's been a very rainbowy like episode, right? A lot of things involving dyes and a lot of colors and everything, so that got me thinking. 
what if maybe next episode work on like a like a dye farm, right? Because a lot of that's just uh, it's just flowers, right? Uh, as far as the dyes go, so why don't we just make flower farms or something like that? That's an idea, right? That's not a bad one. I'd, I'd be so down. Uh, that being said, yeah, this auto sorter. Yeah, I'd, there has been a lot of auto sorting too in this, uh, this episode as well. I'll admit, but it is worth it, man. The amount of farms I made, dude, I am happy. This is like the most work I've probably done in one episode, if I'm being honest here. That being said, my name is DJ, and I have been your captain for this evening. Arrgh!